Hello and welcome back. Let me know if we have any issues with audio or video today. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done this. We currently have a winter storm going on outside, so hopefully the internet holds up. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. And if you're watching this later on, this is going to be the recap for our week 17 of our automotive, automotive weekly waveforms. And we were working on analog mass airflow sensors. So mass airflow sensors that have a um, voltage output that directly correlates with the, uh, the grams per second of air going over the sensor. Um, let me see here, switch my windows around so I can see what's going on. And we didn't have a lot of submissions this week, which is kind of expected. Um, we were gone, I was gone for two weeks. Um, so whenever that happens, we don't have quite as much going on. And this isn't a test that most people need to do. I rarely ever do this test, but I wanted to in include this test just for the occasional vehicle that comes in with a mass airflow sensor circuit code. Um, some of these testing can be done with a multimeter, but you can't really you know, check for dropouts and glitches and make sure that that mass airflow sensor is responding um, rapidly enough with a multimeter. You really need a lap scope. Um, typically I will use a scanner just to look at grams per second when doing mass airflow sensor testing. But if you got to look at the circuit, lab scope's the way to go. And if you guys have any questions or comments, um, go ahead and throw them up in the chat. If you have waveforms that you want to submit, um, and you don't use Facebook because right now we have a Facebook group where everyone submits everything. If you don't use Facebook, I believe I put it in the link or put links to it in the description of this video. Um, we have a form that you could submit or you can email them. Um, I created a wave, a waveform email account just for you guys to email me. So we'll see, jump over here and see if this is going to show up right. It looks like it will. Um, it might be a little smaller than uh, is easy to read here. We may have to adjust this a little bit as we go along. Okay. So I'm going to start from the uh, first submission and we'll work our way up to the top. Normally I go the other direction, but um, I, I wanted to read through these ones ahead of time this week. So hopefully I don't butcher any of them. I know you guys uh, probably enjoy watching me uh, try to read some of these. The first one posted was Doug Wilson. He had a 2011 Ford Escape 3.0, no issues. He was just doing the assignment, um, mass airflow with throttle sweeps. Um, so let me open this up. We're using the ATS scope here. And he's got a couple of, uh, couple of spikes here as he cracks that throttle open. Now, depending on, I think there's just a single image. Um, depending on if you were just doing a throttle bit, our engine bay, uh, throttle snap or in the in the shop and you're not moving you're in parker neutral um, you may see a little bit different waveform because in the uh in the shop if we're in parker neutral and we snap the throttle sometimes the electronic throttle limits us to 3000 rpm or it delays the opening of that throttle valve a little bit we may see something like this where we don't have a big spike at the at the beginning where it's just kind of kind of ramps up and then you can see where that throttle body closed down and then ramps up again on, if you were on a test drive and we did this, we would see a bump at the beginning, um, which I think there's some posted in here that, that show that. So here we just have an analog voltage. We're sitting around, you know, point, maybe point 0.8 or point 0.9 volts until he cracks that throttle open. So this is going to be our idle voltage, and this is going to be the, the throttle snap. Now, there's not a direct correlation of voltage for every make model they all kind of vary a little bit. Um, that's where like the functional test or the, the information service information is going to give you more information, the guided component test and the snap on scan tool or all data or Mitchell will give you kind of a, a baseline reading of what you should be at idle. But keep in mind, you know, that may change a little bit with elevation. I'm normally at the bottom end of the threshold or slightly below it, but I'm at over 5,000 feet here in Colorado. Thanks for posting that one, Doug. I see you just jumped in here. Um, this one here, I'll just tell you about it. This is similar to a previous couple of weeks. Um, he had posted a video as well, 
but I, we don't have the oil pressure captures. The waveform here, we have cam sensor, crank sensor correlation. He was having a P0016 variable valve timing fault code. And he had 20 pounds of oil pressure at idle. And in, in, in the video, um, the oil pressure drops at higher RPM. Now, there's not a follow-up video that I've seen, but typically that's an indication of, you know, a plugged up oil sump. And that will cause, you know, variable valve timing issues. Um, I didn't dig in too deep since it wasn't on this week's assignment to uh, see if there was a known good waveform to compare that to and to see how far off his, his timing actually was. John Webb has one. Um, he did this one on a problem vehicle, but it wasn't a vehicle that had a problem with the mass airflow. It was in the shop and it was setting throttle body stuck open codes. So he did throttle body sweep, <clears throat> looking at the mass airflow sensor, and then he has some uh, waveforms of the throttle position A and, and B, I believe. Um, most electronic throttle body systems have two TPS sensors in there just for validation and safety. Um, so the computer looks at one or the other one and it can tell if there's a correlation fault if one of them is not working or if for some reason the throttle body is sticking open, then both of them will stick at the same uh, same voltage. Um, so this one here, the first picture is mass airflow meter. Yellow channel is our signal wire. Green is our supply voltage. So we can see the little bump here when you crack the throttle open. That's, that is air rushing into the intake chamber. Um, the intake chamber is typically under a vacuum or it's a low pressure system. When we snap the throttle open, it gets filled up with outside air. Um, not all that air is going into the cylinders right away. It's just filling up the intake. So we see that hump at the beginning. That's perfectly normal. And then we see the rise um, gradually as we're accelerating. And then this might have been a shift or when, it, when he decelerated. Um, we saw a little bump and then it, it slammed down. And then it probably opened a little bit more just to keep the engine from stalling. And then John also posted the um, VTA one and two. I'm guessing that's the valve throttle actuator one and two, the TPS on the throttle body. And normally they're, they're going to be offset a little bit or one will have a zero to five volt scale and the other will have like a zero to two volt, two and a half volt scale. Um, but they're gonna be almost the same, um, just different amplitudes. And then some vehicles will actually start with a high bias on one and a low bias on the other, and they'll crisscross. So I think this is, yeah, this is the original throttle body. Um, we can see that they don't always, uh, you know, transition smoothly. And then this is after. Now the waveform is a little bit different, so I'm not sure if we're scaled differently here. Um, 200 milliseconds. 500 milliseconds. So we're on a different time base here, um, but we see a slightly different signal. That could be noise or that could be intentional from the computer. Um, but the waveforms do directly correlate with each other a lot better here. Whereas on the previous one, uh, you know, this one's nice and curved. Uh, we see movement up and down in the green channel. We don't always see that movement. Thanks for sharing that one with us, John. Oh, and here is our, our scale here. So we have you know, they just start out at a different voltage and they move up at a different ratio. And then let me, okay, I think we're, I think we're still good. Juan has one here. It's a 2000 Nissan Xterra 3.3. Customer complaint, constant stalling anytime, at any time and driving down the road. Um, had a code for mass airflow sensor signal low. I commented on this one as well because we had two or three Nissans in the last two weeks with stalling issues or mass airflow code issues. Um, and one of them needed a fuel pump for the stalling. The other two needed mass airflow sensors. But here he has his mass airflow sensor signal wire and his voltage supply going to it. Um, his voltage supply was pretty consistent until the stall. Now I don't see any major dropouts here, but there is, you know, it starts declining here, but the signal also cleans up. So I'm not sure if this is when the stall happened or if that is, uh, you know, when the, when the connection was broken or that mass airflow sensor started acting up. But normally when you see that, that gradual slope, um, it's just from the engine slowing down. Uh, he said that he put a new mass airflow sensor and a, and a connector on it to fix that one. 
Um, this one's sideways. I won't be able to uh, rotate it for you guys. Um, oh, that's not a mass airflow one. That was a five volt reference signal with with noise writing on it. You know, jumping up to about eight volts. Here's another one from Doug. It's a 2011 Nissan Murano 3.5. Lots of Nissans, of course, you know, when we uh, run into mass airflow sensor problems. Um, 2011. So here's the thing with Nissans. I know a lot of you guys know that if, an, if a mass airflow has a low output, normally they're dirty um, or we have connection issues. But a lot of times they just accumulate dirt, especially if they're a hot wire sensor. Um, that stuff just bakes on there. You clean it off and it works great. Now, Nissan, probably before 2000, um, I'm not sure when they did the transition, but Volkswagen did it for quite a while as well. And I think actually Volkswagen was still using it um, until about five or 10 years ago. They were using a hot film mass airflow sensor instead of a hot wire mass airflow sensor. And if you try to clean a hot film mass airflow sensor, normally it runs worse afterwards and you pretty much ruin the mass airflow sensor. I, I learned that the hard way on a, on a Nissan. Um, now, the, the mass airflow is bad to begin with, but I cleaned it, and then the vehicle was almost completely undrivable. It wouldn't even make it out of the bay. So don't clean the hot film mass airflow sensors. Uh, so this was before and after a temporary fix. He ordered a hose, so he had a vacuum leak um, causing low mass airflow sensor output, I'm assuming. Doug, you can chime in if that's if that's inaccurate. And then he was seeing some noise on the signal here as well. So I think this is the power supply signal. We can see some noise that repeats also in the ground signal and the signal wire. Um, he lined up some cursors. That is just noise from the ignition system. I'm gonna open up another window here just to make sure that you guys can still see me and hear me. I accidentally closed the wrong window. Okay, here we go. Um, Doug says, yes, there was a tear in the hose at the throttle body. Now, was this, was that, did you have to buy the whole hose? Did it have that silencer built into it or was that the short hose? Um, I don't re remember if the Murano has that style. I know the Frontiers have like this big silencer mounted to the top of the engine and they have a short piece of rubber on both sides and you can't buy the short pieces of rubber you have to buy the complete assembly but luckily i think it's priced under 100 bucks from nissan um, but that's a common failure we see on the uh, pathfinders and the i think some of the xterras and um, frontiers with the four liter engine so then here okay let me go back so we had our our signal was around one volt here and on this one here, we are sitting, I mean, there's a little bit more noise because we're, uh, I don't think we're zoomed in, but we're probably sitting around 1.5 volts. So half a volt of difference between with a vacuum leak and then after the vacuum leak was temporarily fixed, which I assume just taped it up for testing um, until the replacement part will show up. Thank you, Doug, for sharing more than one. Oh, and then here we have one. This is the cam sensor, crank sensor correlation. Um, I can't remember what week that is. I need to make a master list. I keep saying that, but I never do. Um, so he took one with the crank sensor. It is a VR sensor, um, variable reluctance, AC signal here. We see fluctuations. This is typically caused by engine speed um, variations that cause that amplitude to jump up. We have our square wave from our Hall Effect cam sensor, and then we have an ignition sensor, our ignition signal here for a sink as well. Now, I don't know if this is a waste fire system. Um, I don't know if it said what the year make and model was on that one. Okay, Ford F-150 4.2 liter V6. So we have crank sensor, cam sensor, and secondary coil. So this uses a waste fire coil setup it's just got a big block coil um, with plug wires. And that's why we see one of these secondary waveforms with low amplitude and then one with high. This is firing on the exhaust stroke. This is firing on the compression stroke. Thank you for sharing that one. 
And we have one from Angel. Um, he had a tough time doing week 16. Trying to get the adapters to work was not successful. Um, but week 17, he has a 2003 Highlander with a 3 liter V6. Known good. Snap throttle and park. Take care. Everyone have a good weekend. Um, he did add a filter onto this one. We'll look at the other one that doesn't have the filter. Um, it's a little bit noisier. But sitting in park, we see the big rise. And then it drops down. We see the continuous rise here. No dropouts or glitches. Um, so the signal looks pretty good here. And then this was without the filter. Just a little bit of noise on there. Um, it's common to have noise like that. A lot of times the, the PCM is going to have some sort of filtering built in. Um, whether it's you know digital filtering or you know electrical filtering. They typically have capacitors and stuff to clean this signal up before they read it. And I think that was it. Um, I'll go ahead and refresh the page. Um, I have not finished tomorrow's video yet. So oh, we do have another one here. Um, so sometime tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to finish that video up as long as the, we don't lose power or anything like that and uh, get it uploaded. Um, as you guys may have suspected, because I kind of hinted about it in the last week's video, Next week, we will be doing digital mass airflow sensors that are typically found in GMs. Um, Doug Wilson found one that was on a newer Ford Fusion. I can't remember. Was that a four, 2014? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm just recalling off of the message from, from last week that had a digital style mass airflow sensor. And the functional test and the inf service information in Mitchell was incorrect. They had the same information for an analog mass airflow sensor, and they didn't include information for a digital one. Um, so we have Ruben shared a 2011 Nissan Altima, another Nissan. Um, Nissans, they're also easy to, to get to the mass airflow. Um, we have, I don't, this is a mark. Oh, this is known good. And then the other one was known bad. So we see a jump here when he raised the throttle. This was probably a faster snap throttle we see the big jump and we see kind of some pulses here that's those pulses are probably each cylinder sucking in a little bit of air um so we can see you know how much air mass is going into each cylinder on this one I, i'm kind of surprised we see that um i'm assuming that's what it is and then this one's just kind of a rise up and a plateau we'll go to the one that was uh the beforehand the known bad and it just had, you know, hardly any activity going on here. Now we do see some rippling going on, um, which could be some, you know, air going in as each cylinder is sucking, you know, additional air into the, into the engine. Um, but what's this one sitting at idle? I don't have curses on here, so I can't quite tell. But I'll, I'll take your word for it that we have a known good and known bad. Um, it looks like if this was at idle, that that would be enough voltage because most of them are going to be around one volt. Um, I believe the one that Doug had, the Murano, was one volt when he had an air leak and uh, 1.5 volts after he fixed the air leak. Um, so I don't see a, a snap throttle in here, but we may be zoomed in quite a bit as well. And I think that's it. Um, benefit of the doubt, we'll, we'll refresh one more time. I will double check and make sure that nobody has submitted anything via email or the form. And then I'll let you guys get back to whatever you were doing before, uh, before you join me tonight. Um, we might end up with a short live stream here. Nothing emailed. Let me check form submissions. I know a couple people were uh, happy that I was supplying an alternative to Facebook. And nothing on the form. So we are good. Um, so I'll try to get a video out tomorrow. Hopefully. Um, sorry, I've been gone for a couple weeks. And there may be weeks in the future where I have to, you know, take a break again. The shop is completely busy. We are remodeling a bedroom in the house um, that I was supposed to get done a couple of years ago. And then just a, a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> so we will, uh, we'll see you guys next weekend as long as i get the video up tomorrow we'll see you next weekend for another live stream stay safe out there wherever you are if you're in colorado 
and you're in the northern part of Colorado, I know you guys are getting hit a lot harder than I am with the storm, um, but the weather's kind of all over the place, all over the country. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, and see you next week.